Nearly a month ago, Kerala Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan announced on social media that the state government will grant menstrual leave for female students in all state universities under the Department of Higher Education. The announcement came shortly after the Cochin University of Science and Technology QSAT, decided to provide menstrual leave to all its female students after a representation made by the Students' Union. Vijayan understandably said the government's decision is part of its commitment to realizing a gender-just society. The government's claim could invite a wider conversation. Menstrual leave, also known as period leave or menstrual health leave, is a new topic of discussion in the ecosystem of education and employment. How many days? Under what conditions? And for how long? All these vary and are open to discussion. Making period leave available to students and going forward to women in the workforce perhaps would be an important step towards acknowledging and addressing the often debilitating pain and discomfort that so many young and older women are often forced to work through. So what is the experience of other nations? Japan became a trailblazer in 1947 with its workplace menstrual policy which allowed one or two days off per month for female employees. South Korea followed years later in 2001 with up to three days off for menstrual leave per year. Taiwan in 2017 allowed up to three days menstrual leave per year. Indonesia in 2018 said its menstrual leave policy allows one day per month. Italy in 2019 allowed up to three days per month when in discomfort. In China and in India, some companies have a policy that allows one or two days off. In India, Swiggy is one of few companies that found it had to allow for a menstrual policy for its delivery partners to promote more women to take up gig contracts. Swiggy, Zomato, Baiju's are three of maybe 12 companies trying this idea out. How is it working in other countries? The example of similarly traditional societies like South Korea and Japan are not encouraging. Both countries have laws granting period leave, but recent surveys show a decline in the number of women availing of it, citing the social stigma against menstruation. In conservative societies like India, where menstruation remains a taboo topic, it is possible that a special period leave could become another excuse for discrimination. Some experts ask if there is also the risk of medicalizing a normal biological process, which could further entrench existing biases against women as well as the possibility that the perceived financial and productivity cost of mandatory period leaves could make employers even more reluctant to hire women. It is interesting to note that the United States to date does not have a policy in place. Instituting period leave would help create workplaces and classrooms that are more inclusive and more accommodating. Yet, the context within which such policy decisions are taken matters too.